Hey traders, Stephen Kowitzel here with thetradersplan.com. Uh, back from vacation, it is Friday, October the 27th. We have a lot of charts to go through today, a lot um, for you to chew on over the weekend. So let's just get started. Uh, I'm gonna start first here with a chart of the NASDAQ right here. And you can see, I mean, there, there really, since the November election, I mean, there has been no problem whatsoever. This is just a, a nice little uptrend. Uh, NASDAQ continues to find support around the 50-day moving average, which is the blue line. Uh, you can see it tried to get below a couple times, but, you know, I call that a shakeout. Um, up above is the relative to the NASDAQ relative to the S&P 500. So it has been... You know, broke the trend line uh, in June, and it really has been going sideways. It's been underperforming the S and P 500, which you typically want to see the Nasdaq outperform, but that's nothing to really cause alarm. So I just just kind of want to show you that it is starting to underperform. Um, and in the stronger markets, you want those tech stocks to outperform. But I mean, if you go straight to the chart, we are clearly in a bull market, so you're looking for bullish outcomes, not bearish outcomes. Uh, one thing I did notice, though, and this is kind of the IBD investor in me, um, the distribution days are starting to pile up just a little bit uh, on the NASDAQ. And what a distribution day is, is a negative 0.2% day uh, down in volume greater than the previous day. Uh, so you have one, two, three, four. So what happens is when these distribution days start to pile up, you might just want to pay. It, it's worth taking note. Uh, it doesn't mean we're going to fall into a deep correction. Could just mean the market's going to pause or you know have a little intermediate correction. But uh, the distribution days are piling up. You can see right here what happened when the distribution days were piling up. We just went into about a four or five percent correction and then broke out. So uh, pretty extended. So I just I just kind of wanted to take note. It doesn't mean to abandon ship and sell everything. It just means. Hey, start to pay attention. The market might come in a little bit and give you a greater opportunity uh, to to buy some new stocks. <clears throat> if you look at the S and P five hundred, you know it's really not much different. Um, there's not as much distribution, but you can see, it, man, it's extended from this bullish cup with handle breakout. I mean, that looks like a stock right there. Definitely not a a uh, index of five hundred stocks. So. Um, starting to get a little cluster of distribution up top here, so I would not be surprised if it tried to pull back to the 2500, uh, 20 area, you know, just kind of give the market a, a breather as it's entitled to, uh, you know, just something I'm paying attention to, but the S&P is stronger than the NASDAQ right now. So, and then we're going to look at the small caps, the Russell 2000, it broke out relative to the S&P 500, uh, at the beginning of the month. Look at this, you know, I, I keep talking about how, you know, stocks stair-step their way higher. Um, you should read the Nicholas Darvich book, How I Made $2 Million in the Stock Market. But it, it, right when you think this trend line, uh, the bottom of this consolidation is going to crack, man, it just reverses and goes straight up. So I'm going to talk a little bit today in today's lesson and market update really about, you know, the shakeout, you know, buying the shakeout or, or paying attention to the shakeout uh, when we're in a bull market and the shakeouts are going to happen right when you think the market's going to crack wide open it will reverse. So don't don't be too bullish or too bearish. Be willing to change your mind at the drop of a hat uh, because I thought this was going to crack wide open and then boop, it reversed and then went on to a you know 15% gain. Now it's creating a little bull flag. So I would think, you know, just based on the tightness of this flag, I would think this would be a continuation. So, but either way, we need to respect it. Whether it breaks out a continuation or whether it breaks down, you, you want to respect that. So I'm really kind of paying attention to this flag pattern in the Russell 2000 um, as a starting to outperform and it's, it's creating a flag. So um, to be determined on what happens here, but, but pay attention because I think this could kind of give us an idea which way it goes if the market's going to continue higher or just kind of pause for a little bit, head into a correction or whatever it's going to do. Um, I'm just going to kind of go through some things. I got lots of charts. You know, the Chinese stocks, I've been trading them or the paid subscribers, we've been trading them. Uh, we have one that's done extremely well, but you know, they've done really well. I'm starting to see some, a little distribution. Uh, these Chinese stocks, they're high flying. They're extremely volatile. Um, 
but obviously you can get good gains. And you can see this is Queb, uh, the Crane Shares China Internet ETF, which is a good proxy for the Chinese uh, Internet stocks. Um, you know, broke out and has really just gone straight up. Hasn't even really broke the 50-day or the 10-week moving average. This is a weekly chart. But you can see there's starting to be some distribution in this ETF. Uh, it's down almost 5%, which is the biggest down week since this whole uptrend has started. So it's worth noting, right? Um, so all I'm saying is if you're trading these high Chinese uh, growth stocks, you just you, you might want to be cautious because this week they're starting to come under a little bit of pressure. Now, in major bull markets, they can come under pressure, shake everybody out like I previously talked about, and then just rip higher. So, but just something to pay attention to. You, you want to make sure you have a, a stop in some of these stocks because, man, they can crash and they can crash very quickly. And I don't want to be a part of that, and I don't want you to either. Um, I want to look at the the. Oops, actually, no. I want to look at the Nikkei for a second, and and that's the the. Let's just look at the Nikkei for a second, and let me go to a monthly charts. Um, actually, let me see how, how far I can go back. Um, that looks good. Let's go to a monthly chart. Uh, let's make that a little prettier. Um, what I'm doing is, so the president, Abi, was just reelected. Um, and the market likes it. Okay. So if we look at the Nikkei, this is from 1990. Uh, you know, this... Back in the 80s, back in the 70s and 80s, the the Nikkei just went absolutely parabolic. I think it was maybe around 80,000 in 1990 when it peaked, and now it's only at 20,000. In fact, that just tells you how far it's fallen. But you can see if this is just a straight chart. Now, this is a monthly chart, so this is a very long-term chart. You know, it, it's starting to break out. Um, it is bre bro breaking or it just broke out above the 2000 peak, right? And it tested it back in 2015, fell into correction, and now broke through both of these levels. And if I kind of go to the inspect, uh, so you can see it broke through both these levels. So, you know, this could be a moment where uh, we could go on a five to tier, 10 year run where the Nikkei outperforms the rest of the world or most of the developed economies. Uh, and if we learn anything about the 70s and 80s, most of these, most of the Asian countries, they can go parabolic and they can go parabolic for a while. So the U.S. is really strong. I'm not saying abandon everything, go to the Nikkei. All I'm saying is, you know, pay attention to the Nikkei because if it is hitting, you know, 18 year, uh, actually, let me go back to 97. It is hitting 20 year highs right now. Uh, after being in a 20-year sideways consolidation, uh, I, yeah, I would be frustrated if I was invested in this. But, you know, it's something worth paying attention to and something worth uh, potentially having on your short list. And if you're looking for a play, uh, this HEWJ, this is the currency hedge uh, Japan ETF. You can see it's really strong in the daily chart. Uh, this could be a good play. It's a little extended right now, so you want it to come back. But you know, something where you could play the golden cross, death cross rule, um, you know, 10 week above the 40 week you're in, uh, 10 week below the 40 week you're out. Just something simple like that. So I want to look at the, did I create the TNX in here? Uh, okay, I want to look at the treasury yields right now because the, to me it's the most important chart you have. You know, the dollar, the gold, bonds, the yields, commodities, you know, all of these that are that are correlated, whether negative negatively or positively. But you know, I think it's very important right now to look at the, the 10 year yield uh, TNX, you know, since 2000, really since 1981, when Reagan kind of took over and did his massive tax cuts uh, and when interest rates peaked, we, we've been in a, a bear market for yields. Well, you know, the yields are starting to, you know, they created a bottom in June of 2016, surged off the bottom, and this is a weekly chart, and are creating a bull flag and are breaking out, okay? So the 10-year the yield is breaking out of a bull flag, uh, which signals a continuation. Now, why this is important, because yields are positively correlated with financials. So banks, uh, you know, your broker-dealers, 
So we could be in a significant time of outperformance um, with these yields or with the banks over the next you know several years if yields continue higher. Now I'm not saying it's going to go straight up because it's not. Uh, because if you see that this obviously didn't go straight down. Um, but I'm showing you this to say, hey, it's probably a good time. Let me get this inspect off because it's driving me nuts. It's probably a good time to start to overweight financials, uh, as I said a couple weeks ago, because if you can see now, this is a correlation chart. This is the yield uh, versus XLF, the financials ETF. You can see anything above zero means it's positively correlated. It means if the yields are going up, financials are going up too. So you can see that the yields are positively correlated with financials, meaning they move in the same direction. Now on the flip side, you, this is gold. This is uh, the TNX versus gold. You can see yields are negatively correlated with gold. So if the yields are going up, that means the dollar's probably going up, commodities are going up. That's gonna push bond prices down because yields are going up and that should be negative for gold. Now it's not always a straight uh, crystal clear yields go up uh, gold goes down, but it's just goes to show you that right now the correlation over a 20 period is negative 0.55 and that means there's a negative correlation between yield and gold. So I want to go to the gold chart that I showed you. I believe it was, let me go find that thing. Um, I believe it was a couple weeks ago when I did this and we looked at the GDX and I told you I was very suspect. So you have the GDX, the gold miners, about this pullback to support because you had a breakout out of a 12 month downtrend, a test of that trend line successful, went straight up, came down right in the support area, right? So you had all these failed breakouts and a positive breakout and a pullback to support. And why I was suspect about this test is because of the dollar because down here is UUP, the dollar, <clears throat> excuse me, let me get a drink of coffee. <clears throat> so down here is a chart of the dollar and this has been in a downtrend and it was really, really oversold and the dollar and gold have a inverse correlation, meaning when the dollar goes up, gold typically goes down. So you had signs of, you know, the gold was pulling back, but you also had signs of the dollar was bottoming and then it broke out of this little, uh, little kind of mini head and shoulders uh, bottoming pattern. So then the dollar breaks out and it pulls back and it tests this area of support and then it's continuing higher. So I was looking at this and saying, man, if dollar breaks out even a little bit, this, this test of support is probably going to roll over. And it did. Look, it tried to pop and then just completely rolled over. So I'm also, so, when we look at the yields and we look at the dollar, right, all signs are pointing to you want to be cautious with gold uh, and you probably want to be long financials. So when I'm looking, dollar's been in a downtrend since 2017. And if this dollar is a, whether if it's a counter trend rally, it could come back up to the 50% retracement level, which is at that 2024. So to 2020, 20, excuse me, 25, 25 to 2550 area which is this uh, retracement. So meaning if it can come all the way up to here, gold can come all the way back down to here. So I'm just, I'm telling you this to, to really, really pay attention. The fact that <clears throat> these trend lines are breaking are significant and you just, you, I, I would not be involved in gold in, until I see a reversal of, of yields, a reversal of the dollar. Um, it's probably not something you just want to set it and forget it. Uh, and you look down here, the GDX versus GLD uh, relative ratio. So in, it's been in a downtrend, meaning miners have underperformed gold and then it broke out, which is bullish right around the same time the miners was breaking out of the downtrend. And now it's looking like the relative ratio is rolling over. So you want to be invested in gold, in gold miners when it is outperforming the metal and it's looking like that's rolling over. So all evidence with the dollar going up, with the yields going up, with gold breaking down is just pointing to you want to be long financials and you want to be extremely cautious with gold um, and want to be careful with the opportunistic attitude uh, because we don't know if this is the dollar is just a counter trend rally or if it is actually um, it's actually going to re-enter a bull market. <clears throat> so just something to be incredibly cautious now. <clears throat> now I say I, I've been sending out this XES chart, Spider Oil and Gas Equipment Services. 
uh, for a while now, and you can see it, it really broke oil. Now, this is the price of oil up here. Um, it broke out of a downtrend and tested support around 49 and is charging higher, right? So this looks bullish. I would assume this is an uptrend. I would assume it's going to break this. Uh, but we, we also want to be cautious. But, you know, what I notice is oil is almost at a, you know, 52 week high around 54. Um, but you still have the oil services that are 40% right here, 40% off its 52 week high. So something's got to give. And it's possible that the oil and gas service equipment stocks were just bloated and they needed to really cleanse themselves of all the bad assets and cleanse themselves to, to get themselves uh, in a better financial position. Uh, but, you know, right here, there's a couple things I want to show you. It, it broke out of this downturn. I, I could just draw a downturn right here. It broke out and now it's pulling back. <clears throat> if this holds and it, the, the breakout holds, uh, this is pulling back to the 61% retracement. You can see the last couple days, it's kind of reversed right around here. So I'm going to watch it a couple days and I might make a pick for the newsletter, uh, some, some individual oil stocks. But um, it's, it appears to be reversing around this key level. So if it breaks, I would you know just be cautious. I'm going to watch it for a couple days. But this could be an opportunistic spot for some oil services or maybe just an ETF. Um, another thing I want to show you, and I talk about the breakout, <clears throat> excuse me, I talk about the uh, buying the shakeout and you wanna be aware of the shakeout, especially in a bull market. So I talk about these double, here, let me inspect. I talk about these uh, double bottom shakeouts right here. So you have RSI went below 30 right here. Um, and why I call it kind of a double bottom oversold is because you have it go under 30 and then it came out of the oversold zone. A lot of people buy right there. I like to wait till it shakes, till it goes, you know, close to 50 and then rolls back over again, really just shakes everybody out and then comes out of that second oversold because I, I want, I don't just want it to be oversold. I want it to be double oversold, uh, to really shake out all the weak holders. So if you can see, it's kind of a little double bottom. And then boom, this one worked. And uh, the subscribers and I, we bought it right here and then we sold it into strength, uh, which was a good call because then it started to roll over. But now if you look in the oversold, it's starting to create that again. You can see it tried to get oversold right here. Um, and if you would have bought that oversold, you would have been stopped out. Uh, and now it's getting into that double oversold, excuse me. So I'm looking for it to come out of this oversold sold again to be a buy signal um, based on what happened over here based on the retracement and based on the price of oils is still very bullish at least from the 52 week standpoint so you just want to look for a reversal in oil which i am i'm looking at some individual <clears throat> some individual positions uh let's let's go look at some uh some sectors, okay? So these are the nine sectors, right? The nine spider sectors. Uh, you got cyclicals, technology, industrial materials, energy, staples, healthcare, utilities, and financials. So let's let's look at what's happened. Let's start with the last 20 days. You can see financials and materials are uh, bullish. They are the leaders in the last 20 days, uh, 20 trading days. That'd be approximately the last month. Energy and consumer staples are the weakest, which makes sense because we just looked at energy and it's pulled back for the last three or four weeks. Um, staples, I would be really cautious of staples because they are the weakest sector out of all nine sectors. And and maybe it's because yields are rising. And when yields are rising, a lot of these staples that are dividend paying stocks, they don't look as attractive Um because you know yields are rising, so they're they're you know two to three percent dividend aren't as attractive to investors, so maybe that that's the reason for the sell sell off. Uh, so I would just be cautious on looking at staples as opportunistic because it, the chart looks kind of ugly. Healthcare, you know, you have a lot of stuff going on in Washington, so the XBI, which we're going to look at in a second, that's the. Uh, Biotechs are looking like they want to roll over, so I'd be cautious with that. I'm really right now looking at financials as, as kind of really the area of opportunity <clears throat> and materials. So in the last five days, in the last one week, you have healthcare that's just, just gotten slaughtered, um, and you have financials that are up. 
materials that are up. So that's probably really where you want to, and then we, we're looking at energy as, as a potential reversal. Uh, that's probably where you wanna look at uh, opportunities. And I'm really looking over here, uh, just cause I like a lot of the accumulation that's coming in on the weekly chart. We'll look at that here in a second. If we go over to um, the industry outlook, let's do that for a second. Uh, intraday, let's just look at the last week. Okay, so if we look at cyclicals, you have footwear that's up pretty nicely. Just gonna kind of do a quick scan. Technology, really not as strong in the last week. Um, materials are not as strong. It looks like a lot of it has came from the commodity chemical sector. You got renewals that have actually done really well. I wonder if that is coming from, let me just investigate this. Yeah, that's kind of coming from a lot of one stock right here. You do have some participation, but a lot of that's coming uh, potentially from this right here. So let's kind of go back at that. Um, mm -hmm. So if we go down to energy, we just look at that. You see consumer staples in the last week, it's, it's just not looking good. So I'd, just, I'd really stay away from the sector right here. Biotechs have gotten crushed, completely crushed uh, this week. We'll look at that chart here in a second. Uh, for the finances, you got banks, you got some REITs, mortgage finances. Uh, actually, the REITs are down here. So the REITs are a more defensive play. And again, I kind of think this goes back to the yields are rising. Some of these high uh, dividend paying REITs are not looking as attractive. So there might be some negative correlation going on over there. So you say the REITs are looking ugly. So you want to stay away from REITs. Uh, but some of the banks, the insurance companies, the broker dealers, it's, it's where you want to look at. But if we go back to, I just kind of want to look at uh, the biotech chart just for a second. Oh, come on. Well, I'll just look at, I don't know, maybe that's an internet thing. I'll just look at XPI for a second. Okay, I'm back. I don't know what's wrong with stock charts, uh, but I went over to MarketSmith. I was going to change over here. Anyways, but, um, you know, if we look at XBI, the Spider Biotech ETF, I mean, it's, it's, it's starting to break. Let's look at the daily chart real quick. Um, it's starting to break a little bit. So we just... Uh, that's looking ugly. Look at the distribution coming in. So we just we want to be cautious. Is it opportunistic? Maybe. Um, is there a trend line opportunity? Yes. So you know if you like biotechs, uh, you could buy potentially on this trend line. I'm not so sure about this right here though. So I'm just I'm just kind of being cautious. You know, looking at the individual stocks to see if they're you know if they look ugly or if it's just the ETF. Um, you know, I, I continue to want to come back to the banks and potential energy at the reversal zone. That's just, just where I'm comfortable at. Uh, if we look at, I'm going to end it off with looking at some banks. <clears throat> uh, you know, I have a list of banks, but I want to look at some of the top ones on the relative strength list. So, uh, again, so we're looking at Wall, Western Alliance Bank Court. We're going to look at a few of them. You know, I like banks. If you're looking for long-term banks, I like banks with high return on equities. That really just means they're well-run companies, okay? So, but again, if before the banks took off, look at this. Look at this kind of sideways uh, pattern where it just it created consolidation after consolidation. You can see failed breakout. Try to break out. Failed breakout. Try to break out. Finally, the fourth one worked, okay? But before it worked, look at the accumulation down here. It was a, there was accumulation stepping in right before it broke out. Well, look at this. You have a fail, try to break out, failed, and then you have a deep consolidation, try to break out, failed. But look on the right side of this, accumulation stepping in. So, you know, it's, it's, it's stair-stepping its way higher. It's testing people's patience within this consolidation. But when you see that accumulation stepping in, um, that's worth noting. That's worth paying attention to. And that's why I am liking the bank stocks right now because from a, a pure accumulation standpoint, where institutions and mutual fund managers and pension people are putting in their money, it's obvious that this isn't your mom and pops. This isn't your grandma up the street buying uh, these stocks. This is the heavy investors. And if we can see anything, last time there was a move like this, and it's just it's probably where you want to be at. CMA, same thing. Look at all this just accumulation really since 
I mean, there's, there's been a couple of weeks of distribution, but man, um, CMA is, it looks like a winner to me. Someone's buying this and someone's been buying this for a long time. So again, it's all accumulation. It's a stock worth looking at. Uh, NTB, Bank of Nutterfield, uh, look at the accumulation down here, high return on equity, year over year acceleration earnings, uh, and it's taking off. It, it already broke out. So um, looks pretty good to me. Another one, ITBX. Whoops, nope, uh, that's not right. I independent. Spell independent. Hold on a second. IBT, excuse me. I did that the other day. Uh, broke out of a downtrend right there. Look at the accumulation stepping in here. Acceleration year over year. So, you know, it, it made a monster move. It has to consolidate. It has to digest these gains um, to continue its advance after a 26, you know, after a double. Yeah, but you know when you're, if you're looking at some place to park some money an ETF over, over the next several years, I, I think the banks are uh, probably a safe bet. I'm not saying they're going to go straight up. Nothing does. But you know when you're looking for opportunity, I like to look at the opportunity. Um, uh, accumulation is is a huge factor when I look at individual stocks. I immediately, you know, I look at hundreds of charts every week, especially on the weekends, because I like to let the dust settle and see what's going on. Um, I scan here, I sc my eye, how I'm, I'm just scrolling through charts. I scan here to look at if it's near a potential setup, and then my eye immediately goes down here before it even goes over to the fundamentals. So I go one, two, three. So the volume, if, if the volume isn't there or there's a lot of distribution, I don't even go over here. I just, I pass and I move on quickly. So if you can learn anything, pay attention to the accumulation on the weekly chart. Uh, really pay attention to the shakeout. We're looking for bullish events in a bull market. Don't you know? think the sky is falling, chicken little type stuff, and always be calling for a bear market. Try to stay invested as much as you can.